Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Or shall I say greetings? In case you watch <clears throat> this short video clip later today or another day. My name is Mtineni Makurian Makasi. I'm addressing you today as one of the leaders of Bandu Congregational or Bandu Congregational Church of Zion in RSA. I am the superintendent and then also I am the fourth elected general secretary since the establishment of the church. I can say I'm the third by the way but that is now um, <coughs> another matter for another day. Um, now, today marks the first year since the passing on of our bishop, the late professor um, J.J. R. Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, as you will understand, that a church, Bandu Congregational Church of Zion in RSA, is a denomination. Now, a church is a is an organism. A church is a living organism. A church is a body of Christ. Now, however, whilst we are waiting for the second coming of Christ, we are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the agents of the spiritual kingdom operating in this world. Therefore, you give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So, there are certain administration requirements which churches ought to comply with. Um, that makes now a church to be also an organization on those basis. For an example, for the government to recognize a particular church, that church ought to be registered in whatever way. Or um, for a church to apply um, for, for argument's sake, for funds, I'm just making an example. You ought to ensure that now your church, amongst other things, has got a constitution. That's an administration requirements. Requirement. Now, that makes now a church an organization on those bases, like I said before. So, but mainly a church is an organism. But due to the bylaws, a legislation framework of this world, then a church is an organization. Now, Having said that, a church also or a denomination has got its own organizational culture. Now, <clears throat> an organizational culture has got tangible and intangible factors. I'm just now reminding you of what you already know. So, on those bases, the annual conference of 2019, together with our current bishop, the successor, Bishop L. L. Makasi, Luvo Lincoln Makasi, they have declared, we have declared, um, this day and days after, within this month 
as days of remembrance or a month of remem remembrance. Now, <clears throat> how is this unfolded? In this month, we are in remembrance of the following items which I'm going to mention. We are giving thanks to God. We are glorifying God. And we are reminding and educating each other about these organizational cultural matters. At the very same time, <clears throat> the matter is related also to the body of Christ. But now we observe them as a denomination, as a denomination. They are as follows. One, grace. Two, Bible teachings, three, the doctrine, four, training, theological training, leadership training, etc., etc. Five, heritage, six, culture and art, art ay, culture and art, seven, ministers, ministers of the church. Eighth, philosophy. Nine, gospel. In particular, Christology. Ten, the history, the rich history of Zion Church. Um, and then also, in terms of now the body of Christ. Also the rich history of Zion churches as one of the indige indigenous churches in our country. The last one but not least um, the life lived by the late Professor J.J.R. Marcus. So, with those few items I've mentioned, but not limited to them, we are glorifying God and thanking Him for all that He has blessed us with, as I've mentioned the few. And all of that He has blessed us through or by using the late Professor J.J. R. Marcus. So we also want to be careful here that we don't subject ourselves to a cult or making him a god. That's why we are saying we glorify and thank God for the blessings. But with the specifications, what kind of blessings are we now thanking God for? So, but we elaborate further when we unpack exactly as to what is it that we as this denomination, which is now within the church, um, have been have been blessed with. So, firstly, for the first part, um, I am gonna give you an introduction of his personal life, which we thank God for. That is what you're gonna do for 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 today for today's session. Remember I said, uh, this whole month, we will um, be presenting to you or sharing with you uh, the highlights 
of now um, all that we've mentioned. But the rest um, are all in, 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 in our uh, um, church history book. So I'm sharing with you a glimpse of what um, is entailed in our church history book. So in short, coming to now um, the business of, of today, which is the introduction of his personal life, uh, before we go to other items. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Wright Rev. J.J. R. Makasi, his name is John Gile James Rand or Ranskoman Makasi, uh, and then his course and name that is now, um, you know, when you go for initiation, when you graduate from that university of culture and tradition, you are given a, a particular name. Uh, his name was Dalende. He was born on the 3rd of December 1925. Uh, I don't want to dwell much on that. I will reserve that for, 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 for another session, for another time. He was born um, in Butterworth uh, at Cunningham Mission. Um, he was born of closer parents namely Gaudini and uh, Nototu. Now, Gaudini is born of closer parents. His father was my great grandfather Mtungata. If you wanna know or you wanna see Mtungata, then um, look at my elder brother Zolisa Ziegler Marcus. Then if you wanna see my grandmother. Nototu, look at my sister, Zikona Makas. Now, Dungata was a polygamist. Now, my grandfather, Khautini, is the son of his first wife. That makes him now to be the eldest in that family of that poly of, 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 of that polygamy family that also we call that we call him Inkulu the firstborn now that make now uh, Professor JJ R. Makasi uh, the firstborn as well um, The children of Khaudini and Nodudu were Jongile and Nondim, that is his sister. Um, this is Nondim. He loved her very much. She was a nurse, married to a gentleman in Peter Marsbeck. Uh, they have children, Lindelwa, Lindon, uh, but unfortunately she passed away. She was a, a, a medical nurse. Now, Jongile, Professor Jongile James Makasi, um, 
when he grew up, amongst other things, he was looking after his father's um, wealth. Goats, cattle, sheep, chicken, you name them. He was um, a rich man, so to speak. He was also, a, I'm referring now to, 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 to Houdini, he was also one of the powerful witch doctors, powerful witch doctors. But he was kind of modernized in the sense that you will, you, you, it's rare when you will see him with all the bracelets and, and all those, um, the, the attire that is expected of a witch doctor. He'll always wear um, his jacket, his, um, his trouser and so forth. So my father all the way was with him, with my grandfather. So he learned a lot from him. He learned a lot for him. One among other things, my grandfather was a, a, a was an expert also, one of the best in the stick fighting. So in those battles, he will always uh, be with my father. So that's how we also go to learn <clears throat> the stick fighting. At the very same time, my grandfather, according to the story that was narrated to us by my father was that he was a very troublesome man. Uh, he will at some stage pick up fights which unfortunately he will always win them. And then he will now be taken to court uh, after a complaint has been laid against him or charge has been laid against him but he will always win those cases so um that's the kind of that kind of background is very important why so that you may begin to understand and know uh, where Tadu Jongile comes from uh, Tadu Jongile was a, 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 like I said, a, a firstborn, which is now Itabi, um, even traditionally. Um, so, any ritual, any cultural gathering, any cultural festival um, will always uh, need his approval and also his directive. Um, so he had that responsibility. Secondly, I also mentioned that now his grand his, his father, that's now my grandfather Houtini, was a um, a witch doctor. We those kind of witch doctors we call them Gahalamans. Which they have, uh, they have a, a unique and a distinctive uh, initiation process. Um, those of you who are not exposed to African tradition and culture, you will not understand that certain aspects of our culture are beyond science. For an example, um, will their, their, their initiation process takes place um, in the river or in the sea um, they are called they by the ancestors. I'm giving you now a narration of an African culture um, where they will now we call that Uktwejura. 
they will be dipped. I won't say even dipped because they'll go as far as even under uh, uh, just now deep down uh, in the dam or in the river. Uh, they will all they will remain there for, 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 for days up until certain rituals are being performed. Then thereafter, if that uh, went well or successfully, um, that person will emerge. Um, wow! Thereafter, he or she, he or she will do wonders. So, my father come from that kind of a background. So when my grandfather will now engage in uh, in, 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 the, in the in the healing processes, dealing with people. My father will, will also um, got an opportunity to learn and even to know uh, even certain um, herbs in that regard. Um, so I'm giving you that kind of a background. My father was also an, a praise singer. He was an imbongi. Um, then also within those community gatherings, um, cultural and traditional gatherings, and festivals. He was also amongst the people who were elected as leaders of, 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 of such, but based on each and every age group and cultural category where he belongs. Be it when he was a boy, in the you name them, all of that. So he was involved in such. So taking a leadership role. Um, he was also a charmer. Yeah, he was also a charmer. Uh, ladies were admiring him very well. Yes. Um, that was before he repented. So I'm giving you a narration of his life before repentance. <coughs> yes. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, my father in total has got um, has 15 children. No, 16. 16. And then he's got um, also plus 20 grandchildren. I'm saying plus 20 because it may happen that now there are still other grandchildren that are on the way. I don't know. Remember, he's got 16 children. And then <clears throat> um, you may decide uh, for yourself as to why then why it explains why he will have now plus 20 grandchildren then um he, he, in terms of now um his qualifications um he's got he got his standard six he's got his jc he's got his metric and then he's got his human resource management Diploma, Human Resource Development Diploma, uh, the Public Administration Diploma, uh, and then also the Municipal um, <clears throat> Management Certificates. Uh, I won't mention those um, short courses. I, I won't mention that. I'm just going now to to do to, to, to the main. He also got a, a, a diploma in law, um, which also went further. Is even doing honors on it. Uh, and then he also got a bachelor diploma in theology, bachelor of theology, honors in theology, doctorate in, th in theology, and the honorary doctorate in theology, and then now professorship in philosophy. And then also I, I also forgot to mention the the, the office administration um, um, diploma in that regard. So that is how far I can be brief about his life before repentance, his personal life. Uh, and then, of course, um, things like academic qualifications, even which some he got after he, he, his repentance. Now, lastly, those of you who don't know him in terms of his um, clan name, Dada Jongile Makasi Ngudala. Ujali umkano, utibanlela, ukonzapi, umtato nge vazembe, um, unkonjane, 
ema piko mate em ewe la uthukela nombahle ide yondanda elwandle kuphela kwenkonzana ke eyandanda elwandle mandime apho okwanguko for this introductory a part of his personal life one last thing that i like to mention as well in as far as his family is concerned we all got have got our own personal encounter and our personal experiences that makes us now to have him now different impacts in our lives that is for another day every one of us will share with you in as far as our personal life is concerned our personal encounter is concerned but i'll only mention now um what he was always uh, living out in terms of the family he was striving for, towards the the, the 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 family the, the unity in the family um love forgiveness teamwork or collaboration so 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 to speak that's the kind of a person that he was um when he was leading now the the the, the, the family in that regard conservative in as far as the african um uh, uh, tradition and culture is concerned strict but at the same time loving and and and, and caring and caring parent like i said um he loved his he loved his all his children in 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 in, in different dimensions so that, that was him um we are going to give you a narration how he brought up his own children but i'll just now be, be brief with you to say that you now he he took care of his children during the time when he was employed and also when he was um um unemployed um he took care of his children even to an extent of uh, we, 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 we've learned from him um washing the 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 the, 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 the infant uh, when you are an infant washing you um dressing you you know um changing the nappy changing the nappy yes yes so we'll give you that narration so i'm just giving you a, a, a glimpse of the kind of um, a father he was um to 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 his family what he was doing but as far as the impact of that that is known by each and every individual within our family that is why um all of us will have different um experiences which we'll share with you but there's also a co commonality in all in all those um those aspects then as far as the work experience is concerned he he worked as um as a clerk um at mint clerk um in the justice system of the um, government then he also worked as a prosecutor he worked as a as a as, as a magistrate um he worked as a as a secretary of a trade union uh bay bus union he worked as a councillor he worked as a mayor um he also worked as a teacher at um a m i side um primary school he also worked as a lecturer at saint uh, peter um, theological college he also worked as a lecturer uh, at masubulela college of education um let me just stop there because in as far as other uh, matters are concerned i will also narrate them when we deal with now his community involvement his initiatives and then also the project that now he successfully uh, coordinated and managed that regard as he also has got a, a project management uh, diploma as well in that regard which i forgot to 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 mention to you so let me stop there um uh, in other sessions we're also going to give you highlights of the ministries um the the the, the committee involvement and and all other aspects which we wish to celebrate and also thank god for uh, for blessing us we with such a, a, a an imperfect 
um, human being who acknowledged um, that his imperfect God his own mistakes. Um, so let me say in the meantime, uh, Mazenetole.